So we are going to talk about three different representations of the matrix product, starting with the matrix column representation. Now, in my first video talking about what a matrix represents, I talked about thinking about the different columns of a matrix as separate vectors, so that when we can multiply two matrices together, we just multiply this matrix by the first vector, the first column, and then the second column and put them together. And that's exactly what the matrix column representation of the product is. So let's say we want to multiply these two matrices. The first thing we're going to do is take the first matrix and then multiply it by the first column vector, negative 1, 1, 4, just like this. Now when we do this, what we're going to get, our x value for this vector is negative 1. And we know that an x input of 1 gets mapped to a vector of 1, negative 2 for the output. So because our input is negative 1 in this case, we're going to have negative 1 times 1, negative 2 as the result of our x input. When we look at the y value, we just have a 1. And then that value of 1 gets mapped to 5, 3. Remember that each column of this matrix is looking at the output from a particular input. So the output from a y input is going to be this second column vector. And then finally, we have a z input of 4, and we know a z input of 1 gets mapped to 1, 4. So a z input of 4 is going to be 4 times that. In order to find our final answer, we just add up the results from each of the inputs, and that's going to give us the value 8, 21. And this is the first column of our result matrix. We can do the exact same thing again for our second column. So we have our matrix here being multiplied by this time 0, 1, 3. Now our x input is 0, and each x input gets mapped to 1, negative 2. Then we add our y input is 1, which gets mapped to 5, 3. And finally, our z input is 3 and that gets mapped to 1, 4. We add these all up, and we're going to get 8, 15. And this is the second column of our resulting matrix. So if we want to multiply these two matrices together, all we do is take our column outputs and put them right next to each other. So we get 8, 21, 8, 15. And that is the matrix column expansion of the product. Now when we look at this, we remember that the columns of a matrix correspond to particular inputs. So when we think about the matrix column expansion, we can think about looking at particular inputs into the matrix. So this first column, this 8, 21, or this negative 1, 1, 4, is looking at the x inputs into the first matrix and seeing what are the results. And that corresponds to the first column of our output matrix, which says what happens to the x inputs. And the second column does the same thing for the y's. So if you're in a linear algebra class and you're asked to use the matrix column representation of the product to write the columns of A, B as a linear combination of the columns of A, this matrix column expansion is what they're talking about. Notice that each time when we look at this column vector, we're writing it as some constant times the first column plus some constant times the second column plus some constant times the third column, and we're adding those up. And that is the definition of a linear combination of these columns. So that is what the matrix column expansion is about. Next up, we're going to look at the row matrix expansion of the product. Now we said before that the matrix column expansion was looking at particular inputs into the right matrix and then splitting up the columns to look at each input separately. This time, we're going to consider each output from the left matrix separately. And to do that, we're going to split this matrix up into its rows. Because remember that each row corresponds to a particular output, x or y. So first, we're going to take the top row and multiply it by this entire matrix on the right. In order to do that, we notice that we have one output coming out, and we have two inputs going in from these columns. So our result is going to be a 1 by 2 matrix for one output from two inputs. Now notice that we have two x inputs, negative 1 and 0. And each x input gets mapped to an output of 1, meaning that the input equals the output. So we're just going to multiply 1 by negative 1, 0. Next up, if we look at the y inputs, we're going to have 1, 1. And for each y input, we're going to get 5 times that as the output. So we get 5 times 1, 1. 
And finally, we have four, three as our Z inputs, and the Z inputs get mapped to this third column of one, meaning the output equals the input once again. We just multiply by one. And then to get our final result, we add these all together, and that's gonna give us the result of eight, eight. Next up, we look at the second row. So we have negative two, three, four, times our entire matrix. Once again, we start off looking at the X inputs of negative one, zero, and this time they're mapped to negative two times the input as the output. Next, we add, we have the vector one, one for the Y inputs, and then we get three times that input for our outputs. And then lastly, we're gonna get our Z inputs are four, three, and we know that a Z input is gonna to correspond to an output of four. So we multiply by four right here, and our result from this one is gonna be 21, 15. And this time, in order to get our final matrix, we're going to take these two rows and stack them on top of each other. So you get eight, eight, 21, 15. And we notice that that is the exact same answer as we got before. Finally, we have the outer product expansion of matrix multiplication. Now, the matrix column representation was looking at particular inputs into the right matrix. And the row matrix representation was looking at particular outputs from the left matrix. The outer product expansion is going to look at what's going on right here in the middle. We're going to look at what's happening when stuff comes out of the right matrix and goes into the left matrix. So for example, let's say that we want to look at the X's in the middle. Well, we have two X's coming out of the right matrix here, negative one, zero. And for each X input, we know it's going to correspond to the first column of this matrix over here because those are the outputs corresponding to the X input. So in fact, if we want to see the result from the X's in the middle, we just multiply these two matrices together. We're taking the first column of our left matrix and multiplying it by the first row of the right matrix. Now what we're going to get here, notice that we have two inputs coming into the initial matrix. And that means that these two inputs are completely separate because notice they're in separate columns. They're not making up a single vector. They're totally different. And then we have coming out two different outputs, an X and a Y, which means that we're actually going to have a two by two matrix as a result because we have two inputs coming in and two outputs going out for each input. Now, when we look at this, let's say we want to look at the X output from the first input. Well, the first input is negative one and the X output per input is going to be one. So we have negative one times one as our first value. Now next, we wanna look at the Y output from this first input. That's gonna be negative one times negative two is two. And then our second input is zero, so we know that we're just gonna get zeros on the right side. And that is what we're gonna get from the X's in the middle of this matrix multiplication. For the second part, we're gonna look at the Y's in the middle, which means we take this input for the left matrix and the Y outputs from the right matrix, multiply these two together. The first input here is one. The X output for the first input is five. So five times one is five. The Y output is three. And then the second input is the same. So we get five, three over here as well. Now looking at the Z's in the middle, we know that our Z outputs from the right matrix are gonna be four, three. And then what we're gonna do with this Z outputs is put them into this vector one, four. Multiply these two together. So looking at this, our first input is four. So the output going with the first input is gonna be four times one is four, and four times four is 16. Our second input is three. So this output over here is gonna be three times one is three, and three times four is 12. So these are what we get from the X's, Y's, and Z's in the middle. Notice that this time we have two by two matrices for each result because we're taking the two inputs that this first matrix gets, and we're looking at the two outputs that are coming out of the left matrix, which means that in this case, we're not gonna stack the matrices on top of each other. We're actually going to add them together. Negative one plus five is four, plus four is eight. And then we have zero plus five is five, plus three is eight. Two plus three is five, plus 16 is 21. And zero plus three is three, plus 12 is 15. And that is the same result as we got from the first two answers. So these are three different ways to expand a matrix product.
We can split up the right matrix into its columns, looking at particular inputs. We can split up the left matrix into its rows, looking at particular outputs. Or we can divide up each matrix based on the x, y, and z values in the middle and add them together to get our final result.